a file inside of my inside of the root of my application named index.xhtml. Yes, I want to change that. And what's this page going to look like? Well, I've got it canned out here. Here's actually the code for this particular file here. Let's get in there and edit it. Open it up with Notepad. Let's kind of take a look at some of the stuff that's important here. You know, so you got your standard. I don't know what you got. Your standard uh, uh, body tag and HTML tag and stuff like that. One of the keys, of course, anytime you send something to the server in an HTML page. This is, of course, a beautiful JSF page. But just going back to HTML, you need a form. So here we've got the standard HTML tag library. There we see it marked up there from JSF that has a special form tag. And what have we got in this form tag? Well, in our application, we've got a text field and two buttons. And so here we've got the HTML input text field and two command buttons. The first one, the, the first text field, what does it do? Well, it has a text field in it that represents the client gesture. What we do is we say, hey, the value in this text field should be mapped to that game beans client gesture property. And that's how this property gets initialized at runtime because that text field in the index.html page is mapped to the game beans client gesture property. And remember, the nothing is mapped to the computer gesture. That's why we have to actually assign it when the game gets played. That's our key business logic in our action event method. And so what else do we have here? Well, when someone clicks that command button that says play on it, value play, what's going to happen? Well, we've got a little method listening on the server. And that method that's listening on the server is the execute game logic method. So whenever, that's, whenever the server hears this command button that's ID is play being clicked, it's going to invoke the game beans execute logic method. and all of the different activities such as regenerating the page and sending response back to the client will ensue. Uh, we've also got the reset button that calls the reset method here and of course every time this page renders it has a little output text field that rep renders the game beans result method. Okay, So we've got this output text notice it's bolded and it's in a paragraph tag it says hey let's display the result of the game. Now remember when this game initially plays nothing is displayed down here but when somebody does play some the game a result is played win, lose, draw, tie, or error and the reason that it only displays when the game is played is of course because well remember this method returns null if the client gesture is null, right? The result gets returned, but initially it's set to null. If the client gesture is null, and the only time the client gesture would be null is if the game hasn't been played. If the game is played, well, it's not null, and we figure out whether it's win, loss, draw, or maybe you should even send them an error message. So it's some neat razzle-dazzle. Also notice that the form doesn't actually specify any action. So when this form is submitted, it'll actually call this its own page to render itself again. So this page actually calls itself. We're not getting into any of that crazy, silly JSF navigation stuff when we're trying to just figure out some of the basics of JSF here. And so that looks like a pretty handsome XHTML page. I'm going to save that, make sure that it, it's saved. Uh, one way to make sure it's saved is close the darn thing. I've got my Java code compiled. That looks good there. Well, I guess the next thing to do is just war up my application. and I'm going to do that by using the Java jar utility and taking everything in this folder here that I'm in and the folder that I'm in is the EasyJSF folder. So take everything in the EasyJSF folder, put it into a war file named EasyJSF.war which we're going to throw in the Tomcat web apps directory. Actually by the way I'm going to go into my web apps directory and just delete everything that's in there already. I just like doing that because it makes sure that everything is going to be nice and fresh. Everything gets warred up. You see that easy JSF war file reappears. And when that happens, well, it's time to go to your bin directory of your Tomcat server and just start everything up and see what happens. Well, looks like everything's getting deployed. There's easy JSF.war getting deployed there. The server is started. I'm just going to go open up. I'm going to open up the old Hello World page. So you can see that's my old Hello World.faces page. Uh, this index 
this file is called, that we're referencing is index.xhtml, so we need to change the URL to index.faces. Well, you don't have to change it if you didn't have it like that to begin with, but you can see that the nice handsome page comes up here. I think it kind of looks a bit more like the display on that page I showed you before when you do something like that, but there we go. Uh, what can we do? We can type, I don't know, let's win this game. Paper Beach Rock. There we go. We get a nice little win out there. If we type scissors in, we click play, we get a nice little response there. Only that's not too nice. Um, if we type in rock, that should be a tie. There we go. It sounds very British. There we go. A draw. And uh, finally, what else do we have here? Senior X up a lot of kettle. If you type that in, well, you're going to end up getting an error. But anyways, that's about it. That's kind of the idea behind creating interactive JSF Java applications. What's the key? Well, the key is really creating these Java beans and creating these these Java beans that are annotated with managed bean tags and, and scoped appropriately. Uh, when we use these, we can then reference these properties inside our code, uh, even some of the execute methods and, and even a, a little get result method by, I don't know, just by going in and, and using some of those JSF tags that are available to us. You know, things like the input text field. Hey, I want this property to map to the game beans client gesture and when I want this button, when this button's click, call the execute game logic method and then re-render this page. And again, we're re-rendering this page because we don't specify any other action or any crazy navigation at all. We just keep re-rendering the same page. But anyways, that's it. That's uh, And that's a, a pretty simple and straightforward way. Let's not end this on an error. Let's end this on at least a tie. That's a pretty easy way to go ahead and get a JSF application running. Now, as I said, uh, if you're interested in learning more about JSF, pick up my JSF 2.0 Made Easy and head on over to the server side where I'm the editor-in-chief and we're always trying to create some interesting and new content for you. Anyways, that's it. That's about it for now. Uh, enjoy your Java, pro Java programming and happy JSF!